My name is Brian Langlands and I'm the campus minister here at Georgetown College. And today I'll be talking with you about the question, what should I do with my life? It's an important question, but it's a question that when I was in college, I didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about, or at least I don't remember thinking about that question a whole lot. It's not something I, I wrestled with a whole lot, but once I finished college, uh, that became more important as you think about, you know, well, what am I going to do to earn a living and to, to make some money? Uh, while I was in college, I just pursued things that I was interested in. I was an English major. Um, uh, my minor was in creative writing and poetry writing. And so I had some sense that I would, I knew that I wanted to teach in some way. I thought I might be a lawyer though. I was pre-law when I started at college. I started doing sales jobs while I was in college and, and I was decent at that. So I wasn't sure exactly what all that would look like, but I knew I was still interested in school. And so I ended up going to, uh, to a seminary, not because I had planned to go into the ministry in any way. I, I did not see myself going into the ministry. I was just interested. I was kind of new, just returning back to Christianity as a senior in college and wanted to learn more about this faith that I had just adopted or readopted after seven years of not uh, not considering myself to be a Christian. And so I knew I wanted to learn more about theology and philosophy, and so I went to seminary and uh, tried some different things on. Uh, part of uh, seminary education is you have to do field placements where you uh, go out into local churches or hospitals to do chaplaincy. You have to try all these different things. And uh, it was through doing some different uh, internships like that, that God really opened my eyes to what my particular gifts were and to what the needs of the world are. Also, it, it introduced me to some people, and that's one thing that I've discovered as I've been thinking about and discerning what uh, what I would do with my life. Uh, just, I guess the one thing I would I would try to leave you with is the importance of other people in that discernment because just in doing different jobs and trying on different things and in building relationships with other people, other people have been pretty good at telling me what I'm good at and pretty good at telling me uh, what my growth edges are or, uh, Brian, I don't think you should go into anything uh, in this direction because it doesn't really seem to suit you. So I've really valued the input of other people and having relationships and building those and, and having people who are close enough to be able to speak truth uh, into my life uh, sometimes hard truth, but truth that needs to be told. So certainly other people have been crucial. And also, just as I've continued to grow in, in faith, uh, someone once taught me that when we think about what we should do with our life, uh, our vocations, another, another word for that, how we live out our, our, the calling that God is placing on our lives, um, they've been, I, I've been encouraged to think about not only what are my gifts and what are my passions, but how do those intersect with the greatest needs of the world? And I find that compelling uh, to think about things in that direction so that it's not just about me um, and my career and trying to do what I can do that'll make the most money. Because I've met plenty of people who make a lot of money uh, who don't seem fulfilled, who don't seem to be, to have a deep sense of joy. Um, and so, so I knew that, you know, that vocation's bigger than that. And so that's, that's one thing I've been thinking about is, 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 as far as a good way to discern that is what am I good at? What are my gifts? What are my talents? What am I passionate about? Cause I might be really good at something, but if I'm not passionate about it, I don't know that I want to spend the bulk of my working life doing it. If it's not something that I'm passionate about, um, so what am I good at? What am I passionate about? And what are the greatest needs of the world? How can, how can I bring my gifts to bear upon um, the great needs of the world? And, and my sense is that when we pursue that question in that direction, uh, that God will open up the path for us, open up the door for us that will make sense with, for our lives. Um, another, just one final thing, another professor has challenged students here in this direction. She said, Instead of thinking about it in terms of what should I do with my life, she's encouraged students to pray that God will reveal to them, God will place upon them a burden to serve a certain group of people in a certain way. And, uh, and her experience is that when we pray that prayer, when we pray for that, that, 
that God always answers that and God is always faithful in, in placing that burden on us. And then once God puts that burden on our hearts, uh, then, then we know where, where it is we're supposed to go. So thank you for listening today and may God continue to bless you as you discern uh, what, what you should do with your life. Hi, I'm Dr. Yoli Carter. I'm the Dean of Education here at Georgetown College and my office is uh, room 102 in Anderson Hall, first floor on the parking lot side if you ever have any questions or want to come up and talk to me. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what brought me into the teaching field and how I decided I wanted to go into education. Um, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. I'm a second generation immigrant. Uh, my parents are from Mexico and my grandparents were and so that was a really big part of who I was growing up. Um, I speak both Spanish and English and uh, I paid a lot of attention to some of the struggles I went through when I was uh, in school and, and some of the things that my family went through being first generation immigrants. Um, so teaching was really important to me. My dad was a teacher and my grandmother before uh, him was a teacher as well. So we always really talked a lot about um, other people and their needs and that was something that was always modeled for me. It was really important for me. So um, I started to create a really, uh, you know, really strong passion around that. So I went to the University of Arizona uh, and I went through a program for minority students, uh, which was really helpful for me. I had a, a tutor who really helped me with my writing and then I was able to be really successful in that area and I had really great professors who really cared about uh, me as a student. And at that time I didn't know I was going to go on to get my PhD. I had no clue. I just knew that I wanted to be a teacher. And I was able to do that. And then I went and got my uh, master's degree and then figured out that I wanted to do a little bit more. And I wanted to look at education in a different way. Um, so then I went to Kansas State University and worked on a PhD in education. But I think that the most important thing for all of you to know is that you really, as you take classes your freshman year, pay attention to the things that really interest you and the things that you're really passionate about. Uh, because it's one thing to say, well, I'm going to be successful because I'm going to make a lot of money. The amount of money that you make is only going to take you so far. It's not going to make you the happiest in life. You know, it's, of course, good to have and it's important. But what you need to do is really pay attention to what your gut tells you. So if you take a class or two, you're thinking, you know what, this is something I'm really interested in, something I think I really like that I could be really passionate about. That's what you want to do because your career should be one that you can grow in for life and one that hopefully you can touch other people through. Um, so that's, that's my story and I wish you all luck and I hope you really enjoy your classes and I hope you find your passion. Hello incoming freshmen, my name is Angela Allen and I am the Executive Secretary to the President here at Georgetown College. I am doing this video for you in hopes that you will love coming to Georgetown and will remain here for the four years that you are promising to be here. But anyway, um, prior to my coming to Georgetown, uh, my, I may not look like it right now, but I did 13 and a half years in the military. I was in the Army. I worked in administration during that time, so I worked with a lot of young troops coming into the military who had just left home and didn't know what they were doing or what they were getting into, so I kind of like People used to say I would baby them, so you might find me doing that to you here too, or you might find me fussing at you when you get here, depending on the situation. But anyway, I did 13 and a half years in the military. After I got out of the military, um, I came to Georgetown because I didn't know where I was going to reside or what I was going to do after that. After 13 and a half years, I didn't know where I was going. I had did some schooling while I was in the military, so I had uh, an associate's degree, but I was still like, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? So after coming to Georgetown, I ended up working at the newspaper in Lexington, Kentucky, the Lexington Herald Leader, and I worked there for four and a half years, but prior to that, I worked for the utility company for probably, I think, seven years, and then after the paper, I ended up coming to Georgetown. And I just felt like it was a blessing because I didn't know where my life was going. I dib dibbled and dabbled in a whole lot of different things. And that was part of my um, job in the military. We were, I was an administrative person, so we got to go be involved in many different offices. Not only personnel, I was in an air defense unit when I was in Germany. I was in a um, 
a military police battalion when I was in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. I was there as an employee, not as an inmate, okay? Get that straight. I used to tell people, yes, I was able to leave and not stay there overnight. <laughs> But that was pretty interesting too, because you know inmates get a little crazy. We had a riot one time where we had to um, calm inmates down. They were starting fires and chanting and all this other stuff. So life is just full of surprises. But it's been a real blessing after coming here because I've never worked in the field of academia before. And so when I got hired on to come to Georgetown, I had a girlfriend who worked at KCTCS in Lexington and she told me she said oh Angie you're just gonna love the field of academia you know talking to students and you know just just you know having the time to spend with them and the time you get off and all this other good stuff so I didn't know what to expect when I got here but it was great I love being around the students they make you guys make it all worthwhile so I just want you to know that up front but I hope you will enjoy your time here at Georgetown if there's ever anything I can do for you Please feel free to come by the president's office. I'm located in Giddings Hall on the second floor. People try to shy away from Giddings, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to come and see me. So welcome to Georgetown, and I look forward to getting to know you. Hi, I'm Roger Ward. I'm chair of the philosophy department at Georgetown. And my office is 308 Pauline Hall, uh, up here with religion also. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can do with your life and how you can decide what to do with your life. That's a pretty complicated question to answer for any freshman, for any student, really. I can tell you my story. Uh, when I was in your place about 25 years ago, uh, I was in a business program. I had started at Penn State York, which is a branch campus of Penn State, and wanted to be a businessman. So I went to school and got a degree, and after I graduated, uh, I began to work at a company and learn pretty quickly that doing that job for a long time wasn't going to satisfy me. So like a lot of other people, I went on to graduate school, went to seminary actually, and after seminary decided to teach at a college and needed a degree to teach at a college and so went to philosophy. So it took me about 10 years to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. So I think my first point I would say to you all is you're going to get an idea of what you want to do, but you may not know exactly what you want to do for quite a while, and that's all right. What college is really good for is exploring different ways of thinking about yourself, thinking about the world, and if I could encourage you to explore ideas and different avenues of, of living, that's a great place to do it. The other thing I want to say is that one of the driving uh, conceptions that helped me through a long process of determining what I wanted to do with my life was understanding more clearly what it was I was loyal to or what I valued most highly. I remember very clearly reading a book when I was a, a junior at Penn State. Uh, it's a book that some of you might have read, Mere Christianity. And I remember how struck I was by that book in the sense that it, it displayed certain kinds of uh, realities that I was committed to, uh, especially being a Christian. And even though I didn't immediately study philosophy after reading that book, it stuck with me that my work would be best if it was in line with what I was most loyal to. And that turned out for me to be the kingdom of God. And in many ways, that, that was the theme of how I got from business to seminary and then back into philosophy. Um, I still read Mere Christianity with students. If anybody takes uh, Foundations 112, the Discovering Vocation, we read that book. Uh, but I would like to encourage you all to, to read those books that help you understand what you're most loyal to. I think if you can get that sorted out, your career and your vocation will be a lot clearer to you. One of the best ways of doing that, by the way, is also talking to your friends. Uh, I learned early on that my friends sometimes knew more about me than I knew about myself. So sometimes if you just ask your friends, what do you think I'm loyal to? Uh, you might like the answer, you might be surprised by the answer, but you'll certainly learn something from it. I wish you all the luck in the world in your first semester here at Georgetown. I hope it's the beginning of a great relationship with your other students and the faculty that you'll meet. And I hope it's a really good time for you to figure out who you are, 
what you think God wants you to do and the kind of ways you can fit into the world in a great way.